Chapter 10 Transport and Communication We use many items in our daily life from toothpaste to our bed tea, milk, clothes, soaps, food items, etc. are required every day. All these can be purchased from the market. Have you ever thought as to how these items are brought from the site of production? All the production is meant for consumption. From the fields and factory, the produce is brought to the place from where consumers purchase it. It is the transportation of these items from the site of their production to the market which makes them available to the consumer. We not only use material things like fruits, vegetables, books, clothes, etc. but also use ideas, views and messages in our daily life. Do you know, we exchange our views, ideas and messages from one place to another or one individual to another while communicating with the help of various means. The use of transport and communication depends upon our need to move things from place of their availability to the place of their use. Human beings use various methods to move goods, commodities, ideas from one place to another. The following diagram shows the major means of transportation. Means of Transport Land Road Railway Pipeline Water Inland Seaways and Oceanic Route Air National International Land Transport The Pathways Land Transport The pathways and all metal ro roads have been used for transportation in India since ancient times. With the economic and technological development, metal roads and railways were developed to move large volume of goods and people from one place to another. Ropeways, cableways and pipelines were devised to cater to the demands of transporting specific goods under special circumstances. Road Transport India has one of the largest road networks in the world with a total length of 33.1 lakh km 2005. About 85% of passenger and 70% of freight traffic are carried by roads every year. Road transport is relatively suitable for shorter distance travel. Road transport in modern sense was very limited in India before World War II. The first serious attempt was made in 1943 when Nagpur plan was drawn. This plan could not be implemented due to lack of coordination among the princely states and British India. After independence, 20-year road plans 1961 was introduced to improve the conditions of roads in India. However, roads continue to concentrate in and around urban centers. Rural and remote areas had the least connectivity by road. For the purpose of construction and maintenance, roads are classified as national highways, state highways, major district roads and rural roads. National Highways The main roads which are constructed and maintained by the central government are known as the national highways. These roads are meant for interstate transport and movement of defense men and material in strategic areas. These also connect the state capitals, major cities, important ports, railway junctions, etc. The length of the national highways has increased from 19,700 km in 1951 to 65,769 km in 2005. The national highways constitute only 2% of the total road length but carry 40% of the road traffic. Table 10.1 The National Highways Authority of India was operationalized in 1995. It is an autonomous body under the Ministry of Surface Transport. It is entrusted with the responsibility of development, maintenance and operation of national highways. This is also the apex body to improve the quality of the roads designated as national highways. Table 10.1 Indian Road Network as per 2005 Road Category National Highways 
लेंथ इन किलोमीटर सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी नाइन परसेंटेज ऑफ टोटल रोड लेंथ टू स्टेट हाईवेज लेंथ इन किलोमीटर वन लैख ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड परसेंटेज ऑफ टोटल रोड लेंथ फोर मेजर डिस्ट्रिक्ट रोड फोर लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड लेंथ इन किलोमीटर परसेंटेज ऑफ टोटल रोड लेंथ फोर्टीन रूरल रोड्स लेंथ इन किलोमीटर ट्वेंटी सिक्स लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड परसेंटेज ऑफ टोटल रोड लेंथ एट्टी स्टेट हाईवेज दीज आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड एंड मेंटेन बाय स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स दे जॉइन द स्टेट कैपिटल्स विद डिस्ट्रिक्ट हेडक्वार्टर्स एंड अदर इंपॉर्टेंट टाउन्स दीज रोड्स आर कनेक्टेड टू द नेशनल हाईवेज दीज कॉन्स्टिट्यूट फोर परसेंट ऑफ टोटल रोड लेंथ इन द कंट्री डिस्ट्रिक्ट रोड्स दीज रोड्स आर द कनेक्टिंग लिंक बिटवीन डिस्ट्रिक्ट हेडक्वार्टर्स एंड द अदर इंपॉर्टेंट नोड्स इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट दे अकाउंट फॉर फोर्टीन परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल रोड लेंथ ऑफ द कंट्री रूरल रोड्स दीज रोड्स आर वाइटल फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग लिंक्स इन द रूरल एरियाज अबाउट एटी परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल रोड लेंथ इन इंडिया आर कैटेगराइज एज रूरल रोड्स देर इज रीजनल वेरिएशन इन द डेंसिटी ऑफ रूरल रोड बिकॉज दीज आर इन्फ्लुएंस बाय द नेचर ऑफ द टेरेन अदर रोड्स अदर रोड्स इंक्लूड बॉर्डर रोड्स एंड इंटरनेशनल हाईवेज द बॉर्डर रोड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बी आर ओ वॉज इस्टेब्लिश इन मे नाइनटीन सिक्सटी फॉर एक्सेलरेटिंग इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट एंड स्ट्रेंथनिंग डिफेंस प्रिपेयरडस थ्रू रैपिड एंड कॉर्डिनेटेड इम्प्रूवमेंट ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजिकली इम्पॉर्टेंट रोड्स अलॉन्ग द नॉर्दर्न एंड नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न बाउंड्री ऑफ country it is a premier multifaceted construction agency it has constructed roads in high altitude mountainous terrain joining chandigarh with manali himachal pradesh and leh ladakh this road runs at an average altitude of 4270 meters above the mean sea level the organization has completed over 40450 km of roads by march 2005 apart from the construction and maintenance of roads in strategically sensitive areas the bro also undertakes snow clearance in high altitude area the international highways are meant to promote the harmonious relationship with the neighboring countries by providing effective links with india figure 10.5 and 10.6 The distribution of roads is not uniform in the country. Density of roads, length of roads per 100 square kilometer of area varies from only 10.48 kilometers in Jammu and Kashmir to 387.24 kilometer in Kerala with a national average of 75.42 kilometer. The density of road is high in most of the northern states and major southern states. it is low in the himalayan region north eastern region madhya pradesh and rajasthan why does this variation occur nature of terrain and the level of economic development are the main determinants of density of roads construction of roads is easy and cheaper in the plain areas while it is difficult and costly in hilly and plateau areas therefore not only the density but also the quality of roads is relatively better in plains as compared to roads in high altitude areas rainy and forested regions rail transport indian railways network is one of the longest in the world it facilitates the movement of both freight and passengers and contributes to the growth of economy mahatma gandhi said the indian railways brought people of diverse cultures together to contribute to india's freedom struggle indian railway was introduced in 1853 when a line was constructed from bombay to thane covering a distance of 34 km indian railways is the largest government undertaking in the country the length of railways network is 
63,221 km. Its very large size puts lot of pressure on a centralized railway management system. Thus, in India, the railway system has been divided into 16 zones. Table 10.3 shows the zone-wise performance of Indian Railways. Indian Railways has launched extensive program to convert the meter and narrow gauges to broad gauge. Moreover, steam engines have been replaced by diesel and electric engines. This step has increased the speed as well as the haulage capacity. The replacement of steam engines run by the coal has also improved the environment of the stations. Metro Rail has revolutionized the urban transport system in Kolkata and Delhi. Replacement of diesel buses by CNG run vehicles along with introduction of metro is a welcome step towards controlling the air pollution in urban cities. Areas around towns, raw materials producing areas and of plantation and other commercial crops, hill station and cantonment towns were well connected by railways from the British colonial era. These were mostly developed for the exploitation of resources. After the independence of the country, railway routes have been extended to other areas too. The most significant development has been the development of Konkan Railway along the western coast providing a direct link between Mumbai and Mangalore. Railway continues to remain the main means of transport for the masses. Railway network is relatively less dense in the hill states, northeastern states, central parts of India and Rajasthan. Water Transport Waterways is an important mode of transport for both passenger and cargo traffic in India. It is the cheapest means of transport and is most suitable for carrying heavy and bulky material. It is a fuel-efficient and eco-friendly mode of transport. The water transport is of two types. A. Inland waterways B. Oceanic waterways Inland waterways It was the chief mode of transport before the advent of railways. It however faced tough competition from road and railway transport. Moreover, diversion of river water for irrigation purposes made them non-navigable in large parts of their courses. India has 14,500 km of navigable waterways contributing about 1% to country's transportation. It comprises rivers, canals, backwaters, creeks, etc. At present, 3,700 km of major rivers are navigable by mechanized flat bottom vessels out of which only 2,000 km are actually used. Similarly, out of 4,300 km of the network of navigable canal, only 900 km is navigable by mechanized vessels. For the development, maintenance and regulation of national waterways in the country, the Inland Waterways Authority was set up in 1986. The authority has declared three inland waterways as national waterways as given in Table 10.4. Table 10.4 National Waterways of India National Waterway 1 Allahabad Haldia Stretch 1620 km It is one of the most important waterways in India which is navigable by mechanical boats up to Patna and by ordinary boats up to Haridwar. It is divided into three parts for development purposes. 1. Haldia to Farakka, 560 km. 2. Farakka to Patna, 460 km. 3. Patna to Allahabad, 600 km. Date of Declaration, 27th October 1986. National Waterways to Sadia Dhubri stretch 891 km. Brahmaputra is navigable by steamers up to Dibrugad 1384 km, which is shared by India and Bangladesh. Date of declaration 26 October 1988.
Waterways 3, Kotapuram Kolam stretch, 205 km. It includes 168 km of West Coast Canal along with Champakara Canal, 23 km and Udyog Mandal Canal, 14 km. Date of declaration, 1 December 1991. Inland Waterways Authority has also identified 10 other inland waterways which could be upgraded. The backwaters Kadal of Kerala has a special significance in inland waterways. Apart from providing cheap means of transport, they are also attracting large number of tourists in Kerala. The famous Nehru Trophy boat race Valankali is also held in the backwaters. Oceanic routes India has a vast coastline of approximate 7,517 km including islands. 12 major and 185 minor ports provide infrastructural support to these routes. Oceanic routes play an important role in the transport sector of India's economy. Approximately 95% of India's foreign trade by volume and 70% by value moves through ocean routes. Apart from international trade, these are also used for the purpose of transportation between the islands and the rest of the country. Air Transportation Air transport is the fastest means of movement from one place to another. It has reduced distances by minimizing the travel time. It is very essential for a vast country like India where distances are large and the terrain and climatic conditions are diverse. Air transport in India made a beginning in 1911 when air mail operation commenced over a little distance of 10 km between Allahabad and Nani. But its real development took place in post-independent period. The Airport Authority of India is responsible for providing safe, efficient air traffic and aeronautical communication services in the Indian airspace. The authority manages 126 airports including 11 international 86 domestic and 29 civil enclaves at defense airfields. The air transport in India is managed by two corporations, Air India and Indian Airlines after nationalization. Now many private companies have also started passenger services. Air India Air India provides international air service for both passengers and cargo traffic. It connects all the continents of the world through its services. In 2005, it carried 12.2 million passengers and 4.8 lakh metric tons of cargo. About 52% of the total air traffic was handled only at Mumbai and Delhi airports. In 2005, domestic movement involved 24.3 million passengers and 20 lakh metric tons of cargo. Pavan Hans is the helicopter service operating in hilly areas and is widely used by tourists in northeastern sector. In addition, Pavan Hans Limited mainly provides helicopter services to petroleum sector and for tourism. Oil and Gas Pipelines Pipelines are the most convenient and efficient mode of transporting liquids and gases over long distances. Even solids can also be transported by pipelines after converting them into slurry. Oil India Limited, under the administrative setup of the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, is engaged in the exploration, production and transportation of crude oil and natural gas. It was incorporated in 1959 as a company. Asia's first cross-country pipeline covering a distance of 1,157 km was constructed by oil from Neherkatiya oil field in Assam to Baronari refinery in Bihar. It was further extended up to Kanpur in 1966. Another extensive network of pipeline has been constructed in the western region of India of which Ankleshwar Koyali, Mumbai High Koyali and Hazira Vijaypur Jagdishpur are most important. Recently, a 1,256 km long pipeline connecting Salaya Gujarat with Mathura UP has been constructed. 
it supplies crude oil from Gujarat to Punjab Jalandhar via Mathura. Oil is in the process of constructing of 660 km long pipeline from Numaligad to Siliguri. Communication Networks Human beings have evolved different methods of communication over time. In earlier times, the messages were delivered by beating the drum or hollow tree trunks, giving indications through smoke or fire or with the help of fast runners. Horses, camels, dogs, birds and other animals were also used to send messages. Initially, the means of communication were also the means of transportation. Invention of post office, telegraph, printing press, telephone, satellite, etc. has made the communication much faster and easier. Development in the field of science and technology has significantly contributed in bringing about revolution in the field of communication. People use different modes of communication to convey the messages. On the basis of scale and quality, the mode of communication can be divided into following categories. Means of Communication Personal Letters, Telephone, Telegram, Fax, Email, Internet, etc. Mass Radio, Television, Cinema, Satellite, Newspaper, Magazine and Books, Public Meetings, Seminar and Conferences, etc. Personal Communication System Among all the personal communication system, Internet is the most effective and advanced one. It is widely used in urban areas. It enables the user to establish direct contact through email to get access to the world of knowledge and information. It is increasingly used for e-commerce and carrying out money transactions. The internet is like a huge central warehouse of data with detailed information on various items. The network through internet and email provides an efficient access to information at a comparatively low cost. It enables us with the basic facilities of direct communication. You might have noticed the proliferations of cyber cafe in urban areas. Mass Communication System Radio Radio broadcasting started in India in 1923 by the Radio Club of Bombay. Since then, it gained immense popularity and changed the socio-cultural life of people. Within no time, it made a place in every household of the country. Government took this opportunity and brought this popular mode of communication under its control in 1930. Under the Indian Broadcasting System, it was changed to All India Radio in 1936 and to Akashwani in 1957. All India Radio broadcasts a variety of programs related to information, education and entertainment. Special news bulletins are also broadcast at specific occasions like session of parliament and state legislature. Television Television broadcasting has emerged as the most effective audio-visual medium for disseminating information and educating masses. Initially, the TV services were limited only to the national capital where it began in 1959. After 1972, several other centers became operational. In 1976, TV was dealing from All India Radio and got a separate identity as Doordarshan. After Inset IA, National Television DD1 became operational. Common national programs were started for the entire network and its services were extended to the backward and remote rural areas. Satellite Communication Satellites are mode of communication in themselves as well as they regulate the use of other means of communication. However, use of satellite in getting a continuous and synoptic view of larger area has made satellite communication very vital for the country due to the economic and strategic reasons. Satellite images can be used for the weather forecast, monitoring of natural calamities, surveillance of border areas, etc. On the basis of configuration and purposes, satellite system in India can be grouped into two, Indian National Satellite System and Indian Remote Sensing Satellite System. 
The INSAT, which was established in 1983, is a multi-purpose satellite system for telecommunication, meteorological observation, and for various other data and programs. The IRS satellite system became operation with the launching of IRSIA in March 1988 from Vikanor in Russia. India has also developed her own launching vehicle PSLV Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. These satellites collect data in several spectral brands and transmit them to the ground station for various uses. The National Remote Sensing Agency at Hyderabad provides facilities for acquisition of data and its processing. These are very useful in the management of natural resources.